Today, we're going to talk about three option trades that I've made over the past week. And one of them is a very unique situation where you can get tremendous returns using bankrupt companies. The bankrupt company I traded on was JCPenney's. I'm also going to talk about two other Canadian bank stocks I traded options on this week that I expect to see awesome returns on. So let's get started. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year real estate investor as well as stock and option trader. And when I trade stocks, I typically trade on dividend stocks. Today, I'm excited to bring to you three trades I made over the past week. One of them is a unique situation. It's a trade that we can't make very often. It's a trade that we make when a company goes bankrupt. How can we make money on a bankrupt company? Well, today I'm going to show you how I'm doing just that on JCPenney's using options. Let's dive right into this first trade on JCPenney's. So in the past week, as you know, JCPenney has filed for bankruptcy. So how can we make money on a bankrupt stock? Well, this is a special situation, a special case that's happening. I'm going to show you how I plan to take advantage of it. So what I did was with JCPenney filing for bankruptcy, uh, the stock is trading well below a dollar. In fact, it's well below even 50 cents. So I sold the 50 cent January of 2022 put contract. For that put contract, I was paid 40 cents per share. So as you can see, my max loss, if this company goes to zero, is only 10 cents. But I'm being paid 40 cents to sell these options. I sold 50 contracts, so I have $500 at risk, but I received $2,000 cash in my bank account up front. So you're risking $500, you can potentially make $2,000. My annual return is 228% if this thing goes as planned. Well, what are the possible outcomes? Well, there's three possible outcomes. The first possible outcome is that the stock stops trading, in which case I get to pocket all the money. If this stock quits trading at all, people can no longer assign their, their option contracts to me, then I'm able to pocket the whole $2,000, the whole 40 cents per share. Option number two is if the stock is assigned to us. If that happens and we pocket the premium that we've received, but then we have to deal with selling the stock back on the market, and if we choose to, selling more options again. The third thing that can happen is if the stock goes to zero. Now this is somewhat unlikely over the next year or two because trading will continue, even though it's a bankrupt company, trading will continue. On this type of trade in the past, I've had varying results. One time the stock was put into my account and I had to liquidate the stock to get out of the position. I chose not to resell the put options. Another time, the, the stock turned out perfect. It quit trading several months in and I was able to pocket the whole premium because the person that bought those options from me never had the opportunity to trade that stock to put the stock into my account. So this is a very interesting, unique situation and way that you can make money on a bankrupt company. Now, another option is if someone buys JCPenney's. I was told over the past week that Amazon's been looking at it or if any other company buys it, then quite possibly the stock will jump up above the 50 cents per share where my put is, and I'm able to buy that put back or just let it expire worthless. Another possibility is that the company restructures and somehow comes out of bankruptcy, in which case undoubtedly the share price will again go above 50 cents and I'll be able to pocket the entire premium. So this is a very unique situation that you can look to take advantage of, and those are the, the potential outcomes as well as the pitfalls and the potential reward. The reward to me is very high given the level of risk. It's very, there's a very small chance that the stock would go to a penny, it gets assigned to you, and then you can't trade it. Typically, you'll be able to, if the stock gets put into your account, you'll be able to sell that stock and get out of the position. May have a small loss if it's trading below 10 cents a share, but at least you're able to get out of the position. But odds are, if it works in your favor, then the returns are, are really good for very little risk. The next trade we're going to talk about are two Canadian banks that I traded over the past week. I like Canadian banks because they tend to be more conservative than American banks. The other thing I like about Canadian banks right now is that the exchange rate is in our favor using US dollars to buy Canadian assets. And these two banks offered some nice option premium as you're about to see. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one is ticker symbol RY, Royal Bank of Canada. The second one is Toronto Dominion Bank, ticker symbol TD. Now both are solid banks. They both have strong dividends. 
And Canadian banks in general, as I mentioned, they tend to be more conservative than U.S. banks. And with this exchange rate being in our favor, I think it's a nice time to, to have some of these stocks put into my account if that's what happens. Now, Royal Bank, they've been paying dividends yearly since the year 1870. And currently the dividend is at 5.08%. And TD, Toronto Dominion Bank, they've been paying dividends since 1857 and their current dividend rate is 5.63%. So you see, these are very stable banks that have been around for a long time. They've been paying dividends uninterrupted for a very long time. So why do we choose the strike prices that we chose? Well, let's talk about each one of these banks individually. Now, Royal Bank, we sold the 55 strike put 30 days out, and we got 90 cents per share for that put. Now, as an unleveraged return, if you're not using margin, which I don't use margin, if you're using cash on cash return, that equates to a 19.6% unleveraged cash on cash return. TD Bank, I sold the 37 and a half puts that expire in 30 days, and I got $1.35 per share for that trade. That equates to a 43% cash on cash unleveraged return. Very nice returns for both of these trades. So what are the possible outcomes? Well, let's go through these, these various things that can happen to us with these two positions. Earnings are coming out soon, so maybe the stock plummets. If it does plummet, then we get assigned the stock. Well, at that point, I'm good with that. I like these companies. I've been paying dividends for well over 100 years. They pay a nice dividend. I can begin to collect that dividend if the stock gets assigned to me, and immediately I'll begin to sell covered calls against that position. So a win-win situation. I either pocket the premium and keep it if the options expire worthless, or if they're assigned to me, then I can have the dividends and also begin to sell some short calls against these positions. Now, another option is that the stock price stays above the short strike price and I get to keep all the money. Then I can roll up position again if I choose to or use my cash to enter a different position. Either way, it's going to be a win-win situation. And that's why I really like options. You see, with all three of these trades, there's an opportunity to win. Now with the bankruptcy case, a little bit more of an opportunity to lose if things don't go according to plan. But with Royal Bank and Toronto Dominion Bank, Either way, I win. I get paid up front, some awesome cash on cash returns. If the stock is assigned to me, I'm very happy to own these companies. I begin to collect dividends and I juice up my returns annually by selling call options against it. Then I can also benefit from some dividend growth that I would expect with these companies. If I decide I don't want to, to own these companies right now and it looks like they may expire in the money at expiration here in 30 days, then I can always buy the June call that I sold back and then roll it to July or, or a later month. That's why I like options. It gives you plenty of ways that you can make money. So I hope you found this video useful. I love trading options and stocks, especially dividend stocks, as well as real estate investing. So if you'd like to learn about those ways to make passive income, then please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell, that way you get an email every time a new video is released. And if you found value in this video, please hit the like button. I appreciate it, it encourages me to make more videos. So until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.